We are joined by Lily Courtney. Lily is a cooking instructor. She teaches classes at my shop and also at a beautiful gourmet store in New Orleans called Simply Gourmet. They also have a location on the North Shore of New Orleans and Louisiana in Covington. She has been teaching cooking classes for 25 years. She hails from Alexandria, Louisiana, has lived here in Baton Rouge for five years, and we are lucky enough to have you as an instructor in the shop, and I'm so glad you're on the podcast. I'm thrilled. Oh, very cool. So this episode is all about me being super cranky about this trend of sheet pan suppers, and which is crazy to me. Like it's being it's out there like it's new and shiny when it's been here all along it's just called baking but but as you know I've come around you know yeah. we we teach the class it took you a, a while though to convince me to teach this class because I was like come on this is bananas like people know how to bake why would we why do we need to teach this class called sheet pan suppers and as you know you you've taught it I counted you taught you've taught it a dozen times ah. in my shop in, okay. in in the past say year and a half or so and um, I can I we sold so I was very wrong because we sold out the class and most of the time we could sell it like sell sell it like sell it two and three times yes. over so it's been absolutely super popular now it has seen an evolution in the store. We now call it skillets and sheet pans because the beauty of a sheet pan is you put all the ingredients on the sheet pan, it goes in the oven. And so then we were doing that and then we had a lot of time for either me to talk or... Perfect. But, it, you know, we were juggling, we were tap dancing, not really, because there are, there are certainly a lot of things you can do while your sheet pan's in the oven. We're gonna get to that that those items later because I do want to talk about a lot of those little tasks that we tackle in cooking classes those little things that just have like major mileage on a dish but I want to talk about your classes and I picked out the three dishes that I got the most either comments on or questions about afterwards or that I saw the most customer pictures and I want you to tell listeners what went into those sheet pans so the first one is your glazed pork tenderloin with roasted root vegetables. Okay. Tell us tell us about that that sheet pan. Well, first of all, you're gonna do there's a couple of things. Your sheet pan has to have sides. Okay. And you have to know that the perimeter of your sheet pan is where you put your root vegetables, your potatoes, because you want your proteins on the inside. It's okay. hotter on the perimeter of your sheet pan. Okay. Okay. So then, are we talking staggering? Are we talking, what about this particular recipe do you want to know about? Okay, so this was a staggered recipe? Where? Probably. Okay. This usually is how it works. A tenderloin, depending on how we cut it. Mm -hmm. So, in most recipes, they keep it whole. Mm -hmm. You and I need time. We, need, we don't have that much time. Right. So we'll cut it in half. So mm -hmm. this probably was staggering, because the meat probably was going to get done faster than the root vegetables. Okay. And the root vegetables were probably cut pretty small mm -hmm. for the same reason. Mm -hmm. um, but the protein should go on the middle of the sheet. And sometimes it's propped up by other vegetables, kind of like a rack. Ah, explain that. So if we would do carrots, we would put the carrots in the middle. So when we come to put our meat down, it would, it would act like a, a rack in, in a pan, in a mm -hmm. roasting pan. Mm -hmm. So the air could circulate underneath it. Mm -hmm. That's another plausible way to do it. Okay. Before I get into the other two, I want to make sure we go into these other two recipes that were super popular. Let's back up a little bit. When, when did sheet pan suppers come on your radar? Okay, I gave it some thought. I think the first sheet pan supper was 2013-ish. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a supper, but it was roasted broccoli. Don't you remember? Mm -hmm. When we started Roasting broccoli. Blasting vegetables at really high heat. It wasn't even vegetables, it was broccoli. Okay. So it was Smitten Kitchen and it was Anna Garden. Okay. That was the first two. Ever since then we were boiling it. Okay. We were steaming broccoli. So let's talk about that a little bit because that is that brings me to what is <clears throat> sort of one of my reservations about sheet pan suppers is this whole thinking of brownings. Now certainly you can spread that broccoli on that sheet pan and if that's all that's going in, in that oven, that broccoli is going to get evenly browned and it's going to be fantastic. 
But when I think about a sheet pan supper that combines the protein and the root vegetables, like that pork tenderloin that you just talked about with the root vegetables, one of my reservations is browning. So as you know, I almost always come from a place of what is that plate going to look like? What is our plating? You know, when, when we do classes, I draw our plating. I'm very specific about our eyes eat first, you know, and I want this plate to be beautiful. So I don't want a beige piece of meat. Lamb chop. Okay. Which isn't fair because you wouldn't put lamb chops on a sheet pan. Yes, you would. Okay, we'll have to talk about that in a second. Give yes, me a second. You would. So I don't want beige protein. I don't want beige boneless skinless chicken breast or a pork tenderloin. So for someone like me, so what do I do? So I, I sear first, then move it to the sheet pan. And that's fair, but it's not a one it's right. not a one pan. Now supper everybody's anymore. going to going, hold on Ann. I thought you were talking about sheet pan suppers. Now you've got me with a skillet and a sheet pan. Now, let me just say there's no rules here. Like if you're cooking at home, you're doing it right. But in terms of this specific subject, how does someone like me, what, what's my approach for that pork tenderloin? Because I don't want it gray or beige. I want, I want golden brown delicious on it. So, so what do we do in that instance? With sheet pan suppers, and the reason it works well at your store is because you have to come, you have to approach it with flavor. Okay. Because you're right, we're not, we're not braising, mm -hmm. which is a great way to get flavor. Right. We're not searing braising. To, and getting fond. And not getting fond. So what you have to do is you have to season heavily. Mm -hmm. So we've got that covered with all our spice blends, right? Right. We have to bring flavor. We do that with our oils and our vinegars, right? Mm -hmm. But the big, you have to have something like that. It has to be a hoisin sauce. It has to be your big barbecue sauce. It has to be, that's how you're going to get the flavor. It's going to, you're going to coat the meat with it, the protein, and it's going to run into the vegetables, get on that sheet pan, and caramelize with the rest of your onions and your bell peppers or your zucchini. And that's how you're getting color. You're okay. adding color. Okay. It's a glaze. Okay. So the the heat though of the oven, the dry heat of the oven, is gonna help promote browning. Not the same way that you want. searing on the skillet, but there are ways to get there. So I think your broiler is another sure. way sure yeah to, you switch it up perhaps at the end at the end with that broiler on to get that color on there right we just never have had that alternative at the store sure but at home that's available right okay good point okay let's go back to those three recipes that i pulled as your most popular from your sheet pan classes that you teach at the shop the next one is and this is a this is a go-to in my house. This is one of Greg's favorites. Tarragon mustard chicken with champagne pear caramelized onions. What? So good. Talk about that. What's the cut of chicken? We usually use a bone-in chicken thigh. Okay, skin on? Skin on. So the open dry heat of the oven is going to help crisp up that chick chicken skin because let's talk about chicken skin. Right. That, you know, we, we want it. We want to be crunchy. Crispy. But we also know that we have learned that seasoning ahead of time is how you're going to get there. Right. So that salt, early salting early of that salting. chicken thigh is going to help us with that crispy skin. Here's the thing about those onions and why it works on this pan is because the bone-in skin on thigh, that takes a little minute to cook. So you've already got time on your side and you need time to caramelize an onion. You know, a traditionally caramelized onion is a labor of love in a skillet. It takes, I, I've had it take up to, to an hour to do. So that bone-in skin on chicken thigh is buying you time in the oven for those onions to do their thing. And then you have the fat rendering. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it makes it happen. Yeah, all magic. Okay, and then the next one, which is really interesting to me because I'm super persnickety about my salmon and I like I a, nice, coming. a nice crust on salmon. That's where I've got my skillet and my sheet pan. You've seen me do it a million times. Your sheet pan honey ginger salmon that is one I see customers post on Facebook over and over and over. They keep going back to that recipe. What is it about that recipe that makes it one that they keep returning to? Our rub and our honey ginger balsamic. Okay, what's the rub on that? Um, it's a mango chipotle. Okay. So we have brown sugar in there. So we're using my mango chipotle blend, mm -hmm. which is 
pretty pretty spicy and it's got a good bit of sugar in it. So it's going to do that thing yeah. that we want that to happen. That you love to see do. That caramelization. Right. And the, but the fat in the salmon, the salmon's a fish that can take that, because that's a solid punch of flavor from that spice blend. True, because mangoes and salmon like each other and lemon zest, and that's what's in that blend. There are affinities to each other. So on that sheet pan, what vegetables, thinking about a salmon and the time it takes okay. to cook salmon. Now, this is a salmon that is unseared, am I correct? Correct. It goes on the sheet pan without it being seared. So you've had zero cooking time at that point. What, how many minutes do you feel that those pieces of salmon take to cook and what is your vegetable of choice for that protein? Okay, so this is quick and it's going to be a high heat. It's mm -hmm. going to be 450, 475. Okay. It's going to be confectioned, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go light. You're going to go asparagus. You're going to go zucchini. You're going to do short cooking times. Okay. Because that match. Now, you can do potatoes, but you're going to preheat your sheet pan because that, that's, a, that's a thing. Okay. Because that way, you, when you put your potatoes cut side, up, you know, cut side down, mm -hmm. they're going to get brown because you have a hot sheet pan. You've preheated that sheet pan. Okay. So that's a method. Mm -hmm. That can go in for 10, 15 minutes before you put your, your fish on it. It's called okay. staggering. Okay. But if you choose proteins and vegetables that cook the same amount of time, that can all be done at one time. Okay. But everybody needs to be seasoned, and everybody has to have been tossed in some oil, mm -hmm. and then all put together. Okay. So this is going to be a little disconcerting for some listeners, but um, I think I, I think we need to talk about it. Let's talk about the chill that needs to be taken off that salmon. You know, you know, steaks. I, I, that's pretty common. People understand that their steaks, that even their Thanksgiving turkey, you need to let that sit on the countertop for a little while, take the chill off, because cold protein going into a hot oven or, you know, hot grill is not... It, it's the proteins just shrink up, and then number two, it just takes longer. Right. So everybody's really weird about fish, but even if that salmon were to sit out 10 minutes or yeah. so to take that chill off, that's really, really important in, ter in terms of being able to achieve any sort of crust that's possible on that fish in the oven. Well, and that, we're going to finish it off with a glaze. Mm -hmm. And our choice is, on that recipe, is a honey ginger balsam. So, let's talk about, you know, it, it, those sheet pans are great for getting all of the components of the meal on the pan, but it's also great for buying you time in the kitchen. And that's what we do in our classes a lot. A lot of our, um, uh, not only sheet pan suppers, but many of our other classes, we are always thinking about what can go in the oven so then we free up our hands and we free up some time to do something else. So let's talk about three different things that we do in the, in the class that are super simple that have tons of mileage. One, tell everyone what a gremolata is. Oh, okay. So you're saying this is what we do while everybody's in the oven? Yeah, we have these little tasks okay. that we that are just like accoutrement. You know, they're they're condiments, they're toppings. Sure. And they are short lists of ingredients, but they are just like what they do. They bring up yeah. lunch. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so, so let's start with gremolata. So it's usually used on top of Ossibuca. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all it is is lemon zest, garlic, and parsley. Mm -hmm. Finely, finely chopped. And it's just sprinkled over at the end. And so Ossibuco for sure, but Original. we've done it over um, roast chicken. It loves roast chicken. Um, I sprinkle it on the salad. Yeah. You know, and that's something that can also be in the fridge and ready to go to accompany things. Not too far in advance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's um, a little funky. So talk about um, um, raita in Indian cuisine, tzatziki. Oh, in Greek okay. yeah. cuisine. Talk about that, That I'm going to call it, it can be a dip, it can be a condiment, it can be a topping. It's a schmear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We always use that as either on the bottom of a plate. But yes, it's yogurt. It's, it's yogurt with an herb, usually dill, lemon juice. Sometimes we put garlic, sometimes we don't. And so, but cucumber. Yep, you can have cucumber. So sometimes we either finely chop or we grate cucumber, put a little salt in it, try to get some of that moisture out. Squeeze them Although around. we've done it without that step, and it was just fine. Right. Like everybody's going to be just fine, especially if you're consuming it all right then. But I, but I see it a lot with also some coriander and cumin in it. 
And it's really good on top of salmon. Yeah. So our latest and greatest is Tremula. Ah, yeah. So good. So we did that in our spice roots yep. class where we covered the Middle East, which is like a big subject, but we did really, really killer class. So we did chicken thighs with the sumac and with sumac and lemon, and then that tremula to go on the side. So talk about that tremula. So, but let's talk about the filling of that chicken okay. that we kind of overlooked, but really was delicious. Yeah, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah. So. You stuff that sumac underneath the skin. Right, so it was sumac, lemon, and garlic. And sumac and lemon want to go out on a date together. Like those two things want to go together. So sumac is bringing in like a tart brightness. And this is the worst descriptor, descriptor, and I need to find a new one, but for some reason a pine tree comes to mind, which I know is not a great description. like a candle. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but then combined with lemon zest and some garlic, and we took that, and it so it, it came together like a, not quite a paste, um, a, a sprinkle, I don't really know what to call it, but that garlic is really, really, really fine. Sumac is sort of the consistency of coffee grounds, and then lemon zest. So it was, it came together as like a, a sprinkle, but we took it and we um, took the skin of the chicken thighs, lifted it, got our fingers underneath there, and put a good pinch of that mixture underneath the skin, and then lemon garlic olive oil on the outside, some salt on the outside, roasted at that crazy high heat, blistered the skin, <gasps> amazing. But the tremula was so fascinating to me because we were like, what is, what is this is supposed it to be? be? red or green, depending on your chilies or your peppers. Right, and you and I went back and forth thinking, should we I don't think there's a wrong way to do it, but what I was looking for was a spoonable condiment that had pieces in it versus something that got pureed. Like a pesto. Like a pesto, and it, I, you know, I kind of wanted it to be like a chimichurri, but it's definitely that it was um, lemon and vinegar, parsley with uh, garlic, garlic, and then saffron. And so that little- And that's different. Yeah. You don't see saffron on your movies. And that was absolutely fantastic. I taught the class again last week, and everyone was like, what is that sauce? What is happening? My life has just changed. And it is five minutes. And it sits in your fridge. The longer it sits, the better it gets. And just a spoonful over the chicken. Wow. I did it over roast potatoes. I had some leftover dinner over roast potatoes. It was absolutely sure. amazing. Yeah. The grandma pizza. Yeah, really, really good. OK, I said we were going to do three, we're going to do four, because I want you to talk about another thing we do in classes when those sheet pans are roasting and we've got some time. You are so awesome at this, teaching how to tackle a vinaigrette. So I want you to go to your go-to vinaigrette. How does that come together? I am so famous for my balsamic vinaigrette. You are the salad queen. I am the salad queen. Um, and I truly am. This balsamic mm -hmm. vinaigrette I've been making four years. So you make a big batch of it on a Sunday stays in your fridge, it's going by Friday. But it's real basic, but I always do an aromatic. So it could be shallots or a garlic. I always do mustard. It could be, be champagne mustard, it could be Creole, it could be Dijon. Doesn't but matter. prepared mustard, not oh. mustard powder. It could be mustard powder. Okay. You, know, you certainly could do that. So that shallot and garlic, it's like finely, finely minced? Finely minced, okay. you're gonna chew it. Okay. It's going on the, your lettuce, your vegetables, whatever. Okay. Um, a balsamic vinegar. It could be any flavor. Mm -hmm. um, I love a lemon balsamic vinaigrette, peach balsamic, your 18-year-old balsamic. Those are my go-tos. And you're fine with either a light or a dark balsamic? Mm -hmm. Okay. For sure. Okay. Um, then from there, some herbs, some okay. chives, some parsley in the winter, some basil if you have it. I mean, I'm talking a tablespoon. Okay. You know. And then I'm, I'm one to three. So I'll do a fourth of a cup of vinegar and three-fourths cup of, you know, it makes three-fourths cup to a cup of um, dressing, so the mm -hmm. rest is olive oil. Mm -hmm. And you could do a combination if you're a canola olive oil person, okay. vegetable oil person, you know, whatever. If the bite of the olive oil is too yeah. much, right. if you bring that neutral oil you can in. You certainly bring a neutral oil. So you would do that with canola, you could do that with avocado oh. oil, you probably do it with pecan oil. Yeah. Um, and you do still do the traditional three to one. Yeah. 
So I'm reading a lot about 50-50 ratios and vinaigrettes. Yeah. And I can see why. Mm -hmm. I like a vinaigrette. I like some tang. Okay. So vinaigrette is not just for a salad, right? Oh, we marinate with it. We do pasta salads with it. We do we roast vegetables with mm -hmm. it. We no, it's a must. Yeah. It's in the kitchen. A drizzle over some grilled shrimp. Sure. You know, on and on and on. Okay. Let's do let's go through some of the rules about sheet pans. Okay. Which is better? These are all trick questions, by the way. Which is better, parchment or foil? I'm going parchment. All the time? Yeah. You would never foil line your sheet pan? What about a slab pie? Oh, yeah. Okay. If it's going up the edges, for sure. Okay. So something that's going up the edges. All right. Um, but you prefer parchment? I do. Okay. Um, true or false, a sheet pan is the same as a jelly roll pan. No. Ah, you got it right. Yeah, I'm not bad. So, the it's jelly, yeah, it's not the right jelly roll pans are very thin mm -hmm. and um, they warp right. with the high heat and, and lots and lots of sheet pans are, are cooked at a high heat. Which leads us to our next question. 350 degrees for all sheet pans. We already know that. I know this. False. Yes. How dare you? What did we say? 350 is for cookies. It's for chumps. Mm -hmm. It's a bill of goods that Betty Crocker sold us for cakes. So crank up the heat. You may have to, you know, when I went to culinary school, they were like, 90% of a chef's job is managing heat. And it's not a lie. That is very true. So some, you may start at like 450. And sure, some things could happen. You may have to pump your heat down a little sure. bit to, to manage things. But almost everything is starting at a, at a really, really high heat. The point of this is a sear. Right. So I'm going to give you some ingredients for a sheet pan, and you're going to tell me what vegetables you would pair with that protein and why. Okay. A white flaky fish like black drop. Okay. I'm doing very thinly sliced potatoes and making a little potato cake. And I'm doing really? thyme and I'm doing lemon, and I'm going to, they're going to be thin, like mandolin. Like thin. mandolin. Yeah. Potatoes. Yes, and I'm going to put them on the bottom, and I'm going to put that nice piece of fish on top, and I'm doing lemon and thyme and some flavored oils. Okay. Some nice spices. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So that piece of black drum, it's cooking in, and what what temp are you going in, and, and what's kind of happening? You start your potatoes, you start your potatoes at a high heat. Give it a head start. Oh, okay. So this but is they, a two-parter. But it's not that much of okay. staggering, because they're super thin. Okay. And then you're going to place, give it a few minutes, get it started, and then place an oiled seasoned piece of fish on top okay. with some thyme okay. and some lemon on the slice. Okay, that white flaky fish, what red stick spice blend and oil are you using? Huh, let's see. I'm definitely going to use probably a lemon garlic okay. oil, oil. Mm -hmm. and maybe your, don't you have a bayou blend? Mm -hmm. Bayou yeah. seafood? Uh -huh. Bayou seafood blend, okay. yeah. Okay, I like it. All right, lamb meatballs. Love them. What am I doing with them? Yeah. What vegetables going on that sheet pan? What's happening with those? And what are the products that are going into those lamb meatballs? Okay. First of all, we're probably going to cut them with some pork. Okay. Because not all of us love lamb like I do. Okay. Okay. So it takes the that helps with the gaminess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're going to put some garlic and we're going to put some cilantro. We're going to do. Um, let's think about this. We might want some texture with some panko. Okay. Um, you also could put a nut in there. Have you done that yet? Oh, like pine nuts? You can do a chopped pine nut or a chopped walnut. It makes really good texture. What? So you can make a crispy pan, sheet pan supper. Okay. And you just do those. Okay. On the sheet pan and you make a saucy birthday. Okay. So is, while that, while those meatballs are roasting away, you you're, make you're making that sauce. salsa birthday. Yeah. So. Which is. It could be cilantro, parsley, garlic, lemon zest, mm -hmm. oil, I mean, for people that hadn't made one. Mm -hmm. And it has a splash of vinegar. Yeah, it starts to look like a lot yeah. like a tremula. Yeah. So those meatballs, again, that brown that I'm looking for, you actually, a meatball is actually one that's fairly easy because partway through roasting, you can pull it and shake the pan but also, and move them around and get that brown and yellow. Yeah, but you're going to have a layer of oil on the sheet pan. Okay. And which oil with that lamb? Hmm. It could be harissa. Okay. That spicy harissa. Mm -hmm. Olive oil. Okay. Um, this is a trick question. Bone in thick cut 
pork chops. And what's my question? What's the trick? Would you is that are there times when it's just not the right thing for a sheet pan? Could that be a protein that we reserve for another time? And if so, what kind of pork? Is there a pork chop that that works? And with what? Honestly, I haven't done a pork chop on a sheet pan. Okay, I've done pork tenderloins. I've done pork meatballs. And I think that's our answer. Yeah, I haven't done because I know you do those pork chops in in a cast iron skillet. And All day. Yeah, and they're pretty dynamite. Okay. And, yeah, I think that's, I'm going to reserve that for a one pot with maybe a rice underneath it. Okay. After you sear it, the top on. Okay. And get everybody done that way. So it's red stick spice. We have to ask this question. What are you putting on a sheet pan with a boneless, skinless chicken breast? Lily's like, I thought we couldn't use chicken breast. I thought we couldn't use chicken, chicken breast at red stick spice. <laughs> what are we going to use? What's your blended oil for, for that sheet pan and what vegetables would they take a little minute to cook, especially if you leave it whole and unpounded. And let's talk about that. Let's just go ahead and cut that sucker in half and pound it then. Yeah. Let's I think, do that let's for sure. Do that. If I'm gonna cook a whole boneless chicken breast, it's gonna be in a casserole dish with a good marinade. Okay. It's gonna have some juice. So a little Liquid. more of a braising yeah. kind That's of the, situation. And it's gonna be supper. Right at, you know, 165. Okay. Immediately. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to wrap this up. But you didn't get my vegetable. Oh, what's your vegetable with that chicken? Roasted tomatoes and broccoli. Ah, uh, my favorite. Okay. So we're definitely going to link to that in show notes because everybody needs to know Lily's roasted tomato recipe because I live on that all summer when tomatoes are coming out of our ears. That's what I do with them. Okay. So if you had to teach a novice cook, a brand new cook, one sheet pan supper, what would it be? Oh, we're going to do roasted broccoli, she needs to know that, and okay. chicken pass, for sure. Just okay. simple, simple. Okay. All right. This was fun. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lily. You're welcome.